Hey everybody, Professor Davis here from ChemSurvival.com and YouTube channel ChemSurvival. And today we're going to talk briefly about something called the lanthanide contraction. You may have heard this mentioned in your Gen Chem course. You may have heard this mentioned during inorganic chemistry. But essentially what it means is that if we take a look at the atomic radii of lanthanum through lutetium, this series of elements right here known as the lanthanides, what we find is that there is a decreasing atomic radius as we move left to right across the periodic table. But there is very little else we notice as far as differences in their chemical and physical properties. This is something that made the lanthanides especially difficult to separate and therefore they're some of the later discovered non-radioactive elements on the periodic table. So let's think about why and how that is. Now let's start by considering the ground state electron configurations of lanthanum and lutetium. These are the extreme ends of the lanthanide series. Notice initially that each of these has exactly the same valence shell configuration, 6s2 on each, but also even the same interior configuration as far as their fifth principal energy level is concerned. There are 5s2, 5p6, 5d1. So is lutetium, 5s2, 5p6, 5d1. In fact, they only differ substantially by the filling of that 4f subshell in lutetium. And indeed, the entire series between lanthanum and lutetium represents elements in which the 4F subshell, by and large, is the one that's being populated by the additional electrons necessary to compensate for the increased nuclear charge of the nucleus in each of these elements. So why is it that adding 4F electrons doesn't really do much to the chemical and physical properties of these elements? Well, let's consider that once again in the context of lanthanum and lutetium. Okay, so here is a Bohr model of lanthanum. Now, please forgive me for using a Bohr model for such a complex chemical argument here, but I promise you it's actually going to get the job done here. I know it's very simplistic. But this is a Bohr model of lanthanum on both sides of the screen at the moment with its 5s2, 5p6, 6s2, 5d1 electron configuration in its outermost two energy levels. And we're going to represent all the remainder of these uh, interior levels here as just kind of a yellow mass because they're so deep within the atom they really don't have anything to do with the face that the atom presents to the world and therefore how those atoms interact with the world. Now in order to change lanthanum to lutetium we're going to have to add 14 protons and 14 electrons and of course you will have to add additional neutrons, but we're going to leave those out because they're not really germane to the argument that we're going to make today. Remember, lutetium has those 14 additional electrons stored in the 4F subshell. There are two important things to remember about the 4F subshell. First is that it's in the fourth principal energy level, and that's deep within the electron cloud of that atom. And second is that F subshell electrons are absolutely terrible at screening the outermost electrons in an atom from the nuclear charge. So when we increase the nuclear charge by adding those 14 protons to the nucleus, what we find is that there's a stronger pull on the valence electrons and there is indeed a contraction. There is a smaller atomic radius associated with lutetium than with lanthanum. And it actually does create a continuum of decreasing atomic radii as we move left to right through the lanthanides. And this is the origin of the so-called lanthanide contraction and the periodic table. Thanks for watching, everybody. Professor Davis from ChemSurvival.com, YouTube channel ChemSurvival. See you next time.